Hey, this is Tracy with Color Me This. I am on episode 22. This is a work in progress episode of my two Color Black Barrel sets that initially when I got the second set here, which is in the big case, so the green case is the smaller set of 120 with the 3.3 leads and the gray case is the 180 with the 3.8 millimeter leads and when I received and did the video for the unboxing of the 180s, which I did get from Timu, and I think I paid $31 for them, I thought that they were a larger set of the 120s with the same color number and names. And they are not, just so you know. The, the version, maybe the one, the 120s in the tins could be related, more closely, but the one that comes in the barrel, this is for the 120s that I paid, this was on Amazon, and they were $19.98 on sale, and they come with, the reason why it's 120 plus three is that you get a color blender, a white gel pen, and your own eraser with two holes in it. So I thought that this would be a good set to have for beginners to see what you can get for 20 bucks and it doesn't come in the case so I am keeping the barrel I need to keep them in order so I could not keep them in the tube uh, there's just no way good way to keep them it colored I could have probably rubber banded them in color groups but I need to have my colors all individually labeled so I have made more progress on the 120s and then uh, Last night, I decided to stop working on the project I was working on at the time, which wasn't even a colored pencil project, and I told myself that I wanted to get the 180s in their case from the, the big tin. So I already had the color family order from two different websites. Let's see. So... I had to choose between two of them for color family. Let's see if this other one to shoot. This one doesn't. So here's the one I chose. And the re the main reason why I went ahead and you'll see along here, uh, I actually was doing this in bed and I didn't have a hard surface. I forgot to bring the clipboard. So the, the colors, I'm going to have to go back through and darken them which is okay because I haven't done my, my swatches for it, so I'm okay. But I wanted to uh, compare. This is the Sioux family, Sioux Color, which is um, this, the exact same set, just branded Sioux Color instead of Color. This is where I thought initially that the 120s were related, and I only, I, I only, it only took one pencil to realize they weren't related. So there will be no more red stars on these charts. But... This particular chart, done by Jazzy Doodle Designs, goes into the browns, desert yellow, light ochre, brick dust, and ochre. These are too deep into the browns to be put in the yellows. So I wanted to be consistent with my color family orders, and I, I like to keep my browns all together for doing nature and animal portraits. So uh, Jazzy Doodle Designs maybe did a great job just what when you pull color family order charts off the internet be sure to grab a couple maybe two to three and kind of do a, a quick draft to see which particular color family order you want to use i had the same thing with a star joy gold i had i printed out two of them and one i definitely liked better than the other again because the brown tones were all together not separated out amongst amongst the different color families. I like all the browns to be in their own color family. So that, I think, is just a personal choice. So this is as far as I've got on the 180s, but I did want to compare the pencils themselves and talk a little bit about them together as a whole. And I will compare before I put the 180s aside for the moment the looks. Now the the 180s to me in the tin 
are definitely stamped with a higher quality stamping just by the fonts, the way they did the numbers, and then the Color brand, where I believe the white barrel doesn't even say Color. It's actually generic enough. Uh, nowhere on here, it does say made in China, but nowhere does it say that it is made by Color, and it only has the color name and color number. Very legible, not quite as legible as the giant word carmine red here. I do also like the dropout black letters on the silver, uh, but the C041 is very legible. So this must be like the generic white label version that isn't custom stamped. And the LEDs themselves might actually have some very big similarities. Like I did compare the yellow to the canary yellow and they're almost identical. So probably the pigment itself are uh, the same, but they've changed the color numbers and names to suit whatever the purposes were for these two sets. So I will set aside the 180s for the moment and talk about the 120s. The biggest thing about this 120 is there was no color chart, no color family order chart available. So in all of my sets, this is the first set that I actually had to sort them. Uh, maybe the praying 50s, but that was really easy to do. Trying to color family sort a 120 set is very different than a 50 set. So I've gone ahead and here's my, my little worksheet on some scratch paper on both sides where I am marching through the colors going from different tonal values and the lights to darks for all of them. And I, of course, I, I put a lot more time in. This is the first set of colors I did. And then by the time the purples, blues, and greens came along, I, I kind of had figured out a process and I didn't have to do little arrows going everywhere. So with that, I then swatched. <clears throat> I don't know that I will be using these on any other paper. <clears throat> Pardon me. Then the Nina Bristol Vellum Smooth, which is a toothier paper. So you'll see that there are quite a bit of tooth shows. I tried to do the darkest to then do the whole punch for color matching <clears throat> on all of the different colors. And if you are curious, let's just see. How did I do on my color family? Again, this is subjective. So these are my four swatches. I may or may not put the color family order in Excel and then put up a, a chart for everybody. Um, if I do, I will, I will make note of that. But this is the color family as I ended up doing it, and I think it works okay. I have noticed even with other folks when it comes to these funky greens that they end up in a weird order. The very yellowy greens, here's the lightest. It actually could be a yellow by the color, but I put it in the greens. Again, wanting to keep them grouped. There was a little more green than yellow. And it looked a little out of place over here with the yellow. So this is what my final order is. For me, I tend to put the some places or people uh, and different brands put the white first. Other brands and people put the white last. I actually put it in here. You'll see I messed up. I have to fix this. Um, I had put the white next to the black, but I will change it because then I just went right on and did gold and silver. And I usually don't even color the white unless I put black Sharpie. So I will do all that to this very last one. So I've, I'm trying to make myself do my punches. Now that I have an actual hole punch, it goes pretty quick. Uh, so I try to make myself finish these. I still have so many of them from my first early on sets that aren't finished. What I did discover, I think I might have mentioned this in an earlier whip, the, the, I had a Lazy Susan, it's a bamboo Lazy Susan that has a bunch of compartments in it, and I had like these first two, the pinks and the yellows, 
out. And this magenta has disappeared. I have no idea where it went. I cannot find it. It's the only one that seems to be missing. So I'm very sad because at one point I did have it. Boom, there it is. Slightly different than the coral red. They are not the same. And it is gone. I also had... And this is way over the 30 days. And besides, I think I lost it. So I was okay with having to deal with the fact that I lost a pencil. And that's what I get for now. Being in a home and I don't have to put everything away. Because I am no longer moving every second to third week. I had a much easier time tracking everything when I was in the trailer. And I was in the trailer for seven years. So I'm not really quite used to this whole having projects out that are in various states of completeness uh, and then not losing different parts and pieces. So that is all on me. So I then have started doing some fun co color combinations. So this is what I've used as my master from coloringqueen.net and it's the Artex color combinations she came up with. But I am enjoying the challenge of taking these and reusing them. So one night in front of the uh, television, I went ahead and I have pulled and done color matching from my chart here, from my pages. I did color matching and I picked my numbers. They're all here. I even then made myself get going on the first few. And so far I'm loving how the pencils work. I think they're great. They are definitely, um, what would I say? They're not as, they kind of feel more like polychromos than anything. The, the Artex feel very sticky, very sticky creamy, more like the light fast pencils or the Prismacolor pencils, whereas the Colors feel like polychromos to me. Very, very polychromos-esque. Then I stopped doing color combinations, grabbed some of my color choices for the um, frogs, which I'm definitely getting close to being done with frogs. I do want to continue to give Ruby Charm uh, a, a thank you for having the this free frog for me to use over and over as my comparison for these pencils. I just think it it's gives me a, a good quick way to get some color down without having to like figure figure out flower colors or if I do different projects for each of the sets then it just takes too much time to make decisions. So just getting to decide on the 10 colors. Here's the colors that I picked. I've got two of the three frogs finished. Here, let's compare to the praying. Uh, you'll see that this particular frog, I put too much chartreuse, uh, which is a, a pea green, um, a yellowy green, way more yellowy green than I liked. So I had to then do a coat to get him a little more green with, uh, I used parakeet green as the shading. So I did some light colors which were enough to make his highlights kind of yellow lights. So I'm not fond of the color choices or the use of color. Colors would have been fine if I would have adjusted them accordingly. So he looks very different than the praying basic frog. But as I'm getting, I find as I am coloring more and more frogs, this frog, though supposed to be the very basic frog, is getting more detail and more depth as I do them. Um, this only has the pink, two pinks, the yellow, uh, and two greens. And yet it looks like it has a lot of depth because I'm getting really good at coloring these frogs. And then I have finished the blendered version of the uh, card, cartoony uh, version of the frog. And that is what the colors look like comparing the two. And I haven't done the, the realism version, but loved how these pencils work. They actually are the, 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 the way they work is what I am most familiar with. So I found them very pleasant. 
and not really a big fat surprise. And so, let's see, what else have I got here? Uh, over here, let's compare the actual barrels. So I've got a poly. This is the uh, a light blue from the 120. Actually, no, that's the Prang. This is the poly. And I wanted to grab a... grab well I won't. you do get metallics 12 metallics in the 180 which is kind of fun I still have not found a good use for them and with the 180s I did have one and I don't know if I did it or not but this one here cochineal red is broken off but that could have been me so we've got, let's take a look. And you guys are seeing them through the lens, which I can't see. So that's what they look like. Uh, the two on the left, which would be the very end one is the Kalur 180 with a 3.8 millimeter lead. And then the poly definitely have a similar size. And the poly is, I think, 3.8 or 4. And then the 3.3 which is the we'll put those two down the one on the left is prang and the one on the right is supposed to be 3.3 but you'll see that it looks a little smaller so i think that the lead sizes on the right kalur 120 in the tube is is not def not as big it's like a tiny bit smaller and i don't know how much variation there is in between them. The stamping on the 120s is pretty good. I've noticed that on the 180s there are some... You, you, let's look at this one that has the end broken off. The stamping here on some of them is just like it was rotated. It didn't go deep enough. Whatever in their machinery just wasn't quite perfect. I haven't seen any big problems with the wood quality wise um, the wood coloring on both of them is identical they probably are the same type of wood there are some other brands that I've noticed some discolorations like maybe knots uh, the star joy I saw a couple of discolorations oh I'm seeing a little squirrel out um, we haven't seen a lot of squirrels in the heat and it's not been as hot. And look at this. Yesterday was 72 degrees here in Florida, if you can believe that. That's crazy. That's colder than in the house, which is a miracle. So the Spearer Farben also, I noticed with the wood, there's a little more uh, quality inconsistencies. So I want to talk about this giant flat uh, topped sharpening. This is how they come. And it just feels to me like a waste to go and sharpen every one of these pencils to a fine point. I don't sense in the first page of these, or first row, I've been swatching them four or five on four or five different surfaces. And I have not sharpened these pencils because I figure I might as well use that lead. I do not want to sharpen them to a point wasting the lead when I can use all of that lead to do my swatches on all of these different surfaces I have with that flat point. And I will say, I don't, I don't feel that there's any coating. In fact, I know people say that if you don't sharpen them, they could have a coat on them. But so far, any pencils that I've gotten new that I have not sharpened, and I own a lot of sets of pencils now, I have not found there to be coatings to worry about, but definitely that result, these are pretty rough looking to me. I will chop off the ends here so that I don't care about that. But even in here where I'm trying to get my lines, because the pencils aren't sharp, they have that, they're really fat lead and they're chopped off flat, I'm not getting the really precise 
uh, swatch patterns that I, I'm used to. However, I'm not wasting my lead either by sharpening. So let's look at this one. You can see that I, I've rotated. I have tried to rotate, but it's just used so little of lead. So anyhow, you tell me your thoughts. I know that there are some uh, animal portrait artists that don't even sharpen their pencils. They're like, I know everybody says you should sharpen to a point, but I just don't. And they are sure enough, they're doing a tutorial, a real time tutorial with an unsharpened pencil that's very rounded and they just have no problem with that. So anyhow, my feelings are mixed on these uh, thick, thick cores because I don't want to waste the leads. And I know it's silly to be that paranoid about that. I guess I'm not paranoid. I want to be a good uh, conservative person. And if I don't have to have the lead sharpened for a purpose, I'm not going to do it. So that's what I've decided. Again, personal preference. And yes, my swatching here is a little on the rough side, uh, but I do have five different swatches that I am working on with the 180s. And the 120s came pretty sharpened. Yeah, this one, I might have sharpened that. I think I just sharpened that. Um, I have not sharpened this purple. Oxford blue. So that's the what it came like. So I haven't really found any issues with non-centered leads causing me any grief. The leads could be not centered. The Oxford blue that I just grabbed is off-center. I can tell that it's off-center. Because the look at how it's sharpening is crooked and this is the way it came sharpened I haven't sharpened this one yet and it is crooked but aside from that I haven't had that be an issue um, I have definitely been I think two or three sets have this strip placed inside the case this I don't even know which person there's a few people who actually do this te technique and for me, wanting to get my pencils in and out as fast as possible, the most efficient way possible, uh, I have enjoyed being able to take these out and put them in and immediately see if I take a color out. I'll take one of these pinks out and then I can see that this is 174 and it goes right back there. It's not so bad if you only have one out in the row, but if you get two or three out in a on a page, and then you go to put them back. It's so nice to have those. So I can't stress enough that that is an excellent uh, tip. Whoever was the first that I saw, I give them all the credit. I also, for the 180s, found two sets. No, these are the 120s. Okay, so all I found for the 120s was screenshots that I did a snip of this is the barrel version and notice the font on this 120 barrel set is a little bit different so this this chameleon version um, I, I am not sure why the font is this is called a serif font it has the little tails uh, on the ends of each of the letters and then the font here is what I call a sans serif, so it doesn't have the little ends. I was going to see if 068, maybe this is a different. There's sky blue. This is deep sky blue. 068. I had Oxford blue out. All right, so deep sky blue. I just wanted to make sure that it really is that this was the screenshot of the pencils. Then on the back, I found another set. And again, it sort of groups them in color family order. But I have no idea. You know, I, I started questioning this as a color family because silver is in the midst of the yellows and gold is in the midst of like the orange and then they have clay and ochre. This is the one that the way whoever did this list, uh, color brand, uh, it actually has some of the browns mixed in. So I did not go with this. 
and I chose to make my own, but I do have these just for the record um, since they were ones I printed out. This was an early on attempt to color sort and I gave up on that and I went with the just take a piece of scratch paper and lay them out like you think they are and then start tweaking from there. I will also say one thing very interesting. This color is yellow green and that looks like, you know, moss green to me. So when you, I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper here. You can't really go by the color of the lead because this is what it comes out. It is definitely yellow green and way lighter than the color of the lead. So I have found that to be true for looking for another one. That one is pretty close. But this yellow green is not. So that I have not found with other brands and I am finding that the leads on the colors have some of them have a different tone than when you actually mark them and the reason why that was so apparent to me that it probably wouldn't have been is that I was trying to do my own color matching so when I got them took a color families grouping and I tried to set them out I was using the dipped ends and the and the lead color to do my initial sort and then I found immediately that there were cer certain ones that were just way off so that is all I've got for episode 22 uh, if I missed anything, I apologize. I, I'm trying to keep it all together. I will come back with a further update with my final frog. I'll try to get the 180s all done, and then we'll come back and do a further comparison of the two and how I think they feel. Do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you to all of the new subs. I appreciate you all, as I keep saying. It is really fun to go through and see comments and be able to respond and interact with everybody, which is great fun. And as always, thanks for watching.